The metaverse is coming. What started out as an idea in books like Snow Crash or Neuromancer is slowly becoming real, albeit using mixed reality headsets or even your phone. People are playing games in the metaverse, holding meetings or even visualizing IoT data. But how do you get started as a metaverse developer? On today's show, I'm joined by Gustavo, a developer advocate who specializes in spatial computing and extended reality. He knows the metaverse is coming, so is dedicated to helping developers learn not only what it is, but how to start building apps that embrace augmented and virtual realities as building blocks towards the metaverse. Gustavo has put together a curriculum that teaches you everything you need to know about extended reality and shows you how to get started with your first augmented reality application. Learn how to build a basketball game that needs no hoop or ball, but allows you to use your phone to drop a virtual hoop anywhere in the real world and throw virtual balls into it. And the best part is this curriculum is free and open source and uses free tools to build the app so you too can start building for the metaverse. Let's get personal computing with Gustavo Cordido. Hey, Gustavo, how's it going? Good, good. Thank you for having me. I hear you've been helping everybody get started with extended reality through the power of a pretty cool game on your phone. Yeah, yeah. We actually have been working for a while on creating some curriculum for our students and our academic partners and came out to a very interesting application that you can actually play on your phone. And it's actually pretty simple to build. You don't need a lot of code, but you don't need a lot of technology for it. Now, I like that. I like things simple to build. And I love the fact you're focusing on students, like how we can educate people around extended reality. But I guess the first question is, what is extended reality? It's not expression. Not a common much. expression, so, not at all. <laughs> yeah, how are you extending reality here? Well, when you think about realities, you want to think about what you see and what you perceive, right? Yeah. So we sh when we're usually talking and we're talking right, right now, we're experiencing our normal reality, right? Where I can see yeah. you, I can hear you, it's yep. a lot of that. Yeah. Now there is extended realities because we can add an extra element into them. And that's when it comes into virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, and so on. Because we add extra elements that we're not used to seeing into the scope that we're, of what we can perceive. Ah, uh, so we extend reality by bringing digital things. Yes into our current world. Correct. Right. And that's and that's usually through things like virtual reality headsets, things yeah. like that. So like yeah. so over there, for example, that's a virtual reality headset. So you get completely immersed into a, almost a different reality because right. you cannot interact with what you have in front of you. Meanwhile, if you talk about something like that, that's a mixed reality element that adds digital elements that you can interact with. And so I see through those and I see something on top. Yeah, correct. Cool. And you've actually built something that helps people get going with this. Yeah. Uh, so Talk me through it. What, what have you built for people? Well, we started with trying to teach people the basics, right? So there is a lot that comes into play when we're trying to develop new realities. You don't normally just add an extra element into it, yeah. you know? So one of the things that you want to add and you want to take into consideration is uh, what, what are the surroundings of the person? What are the things that will make a person comfortable while developing or testing one of these devices or one of these applications? So basically we teach what are the measures of comfort that you need to have? What is the basics of extended reality? What makes... Uh, an application extended reality, because as I mentioned, there is different kinds of reality, right? You have yeah. virtual reality, you have mixed reality, you have augmented reality, which is probably the most common. And each one of these have different parameters and different uh, considerations that you have to take into account while building. Now, once we touch upon foundations, then we can start into more of the techie stuff, more of the fun stuff. Oh, let's start building, you know? Right. So we try to teach um, we try to teach a little bit of coding so people understand the basics of it. But luckily, our curriculum is currently built upon on Unity, which is a game engine. And Unity a game, is a game engine. Yes, it's what we build. It's what we build video games on. It's actually that's the coolest thing. So literally, you can take like a game developer tool, mm -hmm. and you can yeah, you know, same same as you would in a game. You have like an avatar or like a chest you can open. Yeah, you can take those in Unity, but put them into a virtual world that you could experience through. Yeah. VR headset or an AR headset? Yeah, even a phone. That's the coolest thing. Even a phone? Yeah, because oh. you can actually include digital objects that you'll see on your phone and actually on your phone. with them through them. So I don't need this. You don't need all of that, no. I can throw, I can throw, I can throw that away. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I won't. I wouldn't do it. But yeah. <laughs> awesome. No, you've got to show me this. I want to yeah. see this. Show me, For show sure. me, show me. This sounds For so sure. cool. So here you can see this is the Unity window. This is the main Unity frame. Unity is a very, very friendly uh, game engine. Yeah. And it allows you to create a lot of things. So the first thing you'll see here in the center is what we call the scene. 
The scene is where you're going to be placing RP objects, is where you're going to be interacting with the things that you want to create. Yeah. And at this time, you can see it's pretty empty. That's because we don't want to have everything spawn as soon as we launch the app. We want the application to actually give uh, the freedom of placing the objects and then interacting with them. Yeah. So in this example, for this application, we're actually building a basketball game. So, so when I can like throw a virtual basketball into yes. a virtual hoop. And actually, right. I got you with the basketball there. Actual virtual basketball. Actual virtual basketball. It looks like a proper basketball. Yes. And you're actually going to be throwing that into a, bar a basketball hoop. That's wow. also going to be digital. And that, I, as you say, I can use a headset or a phone. I can like put that, say, over there against the ball. Yep. And I can just yep. throw, vir throw a virtual ball. Yes, exactly. And that's why you don't see anything here yet, because we haven't placed it yet. Once we run this application on a phone or a device, you actually be able to place it. And nice. the cool thing is that we don't need a lot of code for this. That's one of the beautiful things of AR development is that Unity provides you with the, all the elements that you need. So basically, we have our, our, our origin, our session origin. This is where we're going to be starting our whole uh, application. We have a camera. That's where we're going to be looking at once we're uh, launching the application. So camera's kind of like our eyes, basically. Basically. Yeah, exactly. right. Gotcha. That's gotcha. exactly what, what it is. Then we have what I call a placement indicator in this case, which is an object. In this case, I, so, I chose a quad, which is just a small mesh of, a, of an area. I give it a texture that looks like a little arrow. Let me see. Make it see it. Oh, there you go. And that's where it's going to let you know where you're going to be placing the hoop. Now, the beauty of Unity is that it's not very code heavy. It's actually very simple to uh, connect things into it and just add its extra scripts. That's what we call the little snippets of code that allows us to do things. Right. And in, in this case, they're actually pretty short and pretty simple. So for example, if you want to place our hoop, you can see that it's not a lot of lines of code. It's actually pretty simple. And most okay. of these things come with Unity. So just to give you a little rundown, we basically bring up our objects. In this case, we're going to have our hoop prefab, which is what I just showed you. It's our object prefab in Unity is basically objects that have texture and their own yeah. mesh. And that we want to bring those in. So we create a game object called a place hoop. And that's what we're going to be setting our prefab to. So once we get it and we get it to it and we assign it to it, once we set it to spawn, it's going to spawn the whole prefab. So we just say, put the hoop here and then yeah. in the app, and that then runs that bit of code to put the, put the, the hoop, hoop there. there. Nice. And nice. you can actually see that we have both that for the ball and the for the hoop, but of course the hoop is the first thing we want to place. We don't want to throw a ball when there's no hoop, right? <laughs> yeah, no, so that's right. No, that's right. The easiest thing is there. So the in the Unity we have what we call the update function, which is the main function of the whole scene. Once this is running, this is what's going to be updating constantly while the application is running, and this is basically just telling us, okay, if the object is placed, then we don't have to update anymore. Now we can move into actually playing, but while it's while it's not placed, then we can go and look into the touch and so on. So the way I set up this application for work, for us to work is basically you touch on your screen of the phone once you want to place the object. So you can look around, you can look at your indicator and actually place it at the location. So you take my to. phone and say, over there, place, yes. and it puts it over there. And it will put it over there. Right. You'll see the indicator on the floor, on the floor too, so you'll be yep. able to do it. However, I do recommend to scan a wide area because you want to make sure that the camera detects most of it. That's one of the things that come with the phones. Okay, so, so the phone detects all the areas it works over, like the floor is. Yes. Because when you put this down, it's going to be on the floor, isn't it? Yes. So exactly. the phone's got to identify where that floor is using Correct. the magic inside the phone. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And the yeah. good thing is that every phone has one. So it's iPhone, Android, whatever you think about, they have it. So you're good with it. So all the new phones just have that. It just, yes. just Any works. Any smartphone will have it. Yeah. Nice, so nice. Not a lot of requirements there. Okay. So once we uh, feel the touch on the, on the phone, it's going to start what's called a raycast phase. And you're that's going to be basically throwing rays. Rays are um, invisible. Imagine invisible lasers that are detecting the area. And that's what's going to be saying how to place the hoop and make it as look as real as possible. So that's all done in the phone. So you just have to call the actual raycast, have a raycast manager uh, take care of it. And once all the hits are there, magic is done, hoop is placed, and you can actually start playing. So literally, there's a bit of code that says to the phone, send out laser beams. Yeah, pretty just much. Just to work out yeah. where, and th those laser beams work out yeah. where the floor is. Exactly. <laughs> OK, I do have these phones don't get smart and you know, come, yeah, and, come and attack yeah, us with laser be beams. Scary. It sounds yes. a bit scary. <laughs> it is. Now, the other script that I had added into this is what I call ball control. And this is main, mainly so we know what the ball is going to be doing. That's when you can throw the ball. This yes. script just manages, I guess, gravity? Things yes, like? that's yeah. one of the beautiful things here. Because at first you would think, oh, how do I program gravity? Like, I don't know how to, how, I don't know physics. That's too much for me. You know? <laughs> like, I, I just want things to happen. So basically, we start a new function of a new update uh, that's going to be running after the hoop is placed. 
And in this case, you see that I have a, fu a function that's called get mouse button down. That's because I can use a mouse if I was playing on a computer. I could use uh, touch if I'm on a phone. It's a multiple, very, uh, I would say, multi multi device function. Nice. You're not yeah. just case you're writing this just for a phone. You're writing this, and you could use this in other augmented reality devices. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. So nice. Once it detects that it's down, uh, it'll it'll start the whole uh, throwing function. Yeah. And once you release it's going to be releasing the, the, the ball. And then it goes to the air. Well, there'll be something to work Correct. out the gravity. So it's not just going to keep going off into space. It's going to go up and then yes, come back correct. down again. Right. And the gravity comes actually from uh, our, our forces inside of Unity. Unity has its own physics, and I can show you through here. Uh, so if we go... So Unity knows what down is and yeah, they how to accelerate detect gravity. It, yeah. They right. kind of detect it. Yeah, it's pretty nice. So if we go into our... Um, Session, session origin, actually, well, we have it out of control. Our prefab, I'm so sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. So if you look at our prefab, we have what's called mesh colliders. And yep. that's what's adding uh, dimensions outside of the prefab for things to collide with it. So, so that can pick up if the basketball actually goes through or it hits the or basket it, or bounces off the backboard. Yeah, in my or... case, it always bounces because I'm really <laughs> terrible at it. <laughs> but that's part of it. So you can build an app to so play, play basketball. We can't actually play basketball for Toffee. Yes. Gotcha. <laughs> now, uh, for objects that are going to be uh, behaving like real world objects, we have what's called a rigid body. That's what uh, it's a property that allows us to bring physics into it. Right. And once we uh, bring physics into it, we also have a, to have another collider, by the way, because a ball will, I mean, it has to collide with something. You can have the collider on the on your hoop, but if the ball doesn't have it, the ball is going to go through it. And I guess straight through the ground as well. So it goes, yes. yeah, you do that perfect <laughs> basket, it goes through the hoop, and then, then just, just keeps falling stops forever. Doing, falls through the earth, yeah. never seen again. Yeah, exactly. Right. So once you have both your, your collider and your sphere, and then you have your rigid body, then you can add things to it. So you see, I, I just clicked on the button that says, uh, use, gra use gravity. Literally, it's it. just I tick the use gravity button and, and we get then gravity. Then we'll use gravity magic. Nice. Newton will be jealous. Nice. And we from there <laughs> we basically we can basically just move on and start playing. It's cool. So you can literally cool. now take that and you just deploy that to say so you know iPhone. my phone. Yeah. So that's now deployed to my phone. Yes, and you don't even need to have it plugged. So I don't need to plug the computer. I can unplug, unplug it. Correct. Should we go see, shoot some hoops? Yeah. Let's go yeah. outside and do it. Let's do it. Let's Come go. on. So what are you saying? Yeah. I don't need this. Not at all. I don't need that. Nope. Not Let's at all. do it. Let's play ball. I need this phone. <laughs> okay. Right. So we launch the app. We launch the app. And once it's launched, then we're going to scan the area so that the magic right. lasers show up. And then you can see. Okay. The so all those dots on the floor, they're not really there. No. That's the lasers. Yeah. And then you can see the placement indicator telling us where the hoop is going to be. So the rest of the hoop goes. So we place it here. There's the hoop. And there's a That's ball. the ball going flying. Yeah. So if you, if you want to try throwing. So if I flick that up. Yeah. Oh. oh. It bounce right there. That's and that's what we're saying about that the rigid body. It bounces off Correct. the hoop. Okay. Correct. Awesome. And then, oh, we kind of just spin the ground. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Let's head back inside and talk me through the rest of the curriculum. Yes. Let's do it. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. I haven't played basketball in ages. That was great. Yeah. Cool. The NBA now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So you said that everything you've talked about today, this is something that's a curricular for anyone. Yeah. to use. So do you want to just be very quickly show me show me this curricula? Yeah. So we have this hosted on GitHub. So it's free open source. Free and open source. Nice. Yeah. So nice. So every, everything is there. So it's an eight week, uh, 25 lesson curriculum. So you once you get there, you can see all the components of the curriculum. You have all the, you know, all the code, all the innards of it, since we're hosting it as a repository. But if you go down, you can have a very nicely tidy uh, readme and you can start jumping into it straight up. You have your first unit, you introduce the realities, we have different lessons. We have an assignment for each one of our for each one of our um, lessons. So it's not just reading, there's kind of a bit of no, doing there as well. Some of doing, yeah. Nice. And the deeper you go, the more entertaining these become. Because at nice. first they're very technical. They're very like knowledge based. They're very uh, yeah. less practical. But the deeper you go into it, the more you start learning. So we have a uh, special design, we have the interactions. Um, so kind of a lot of theory here of just what a virtual or extended reality, yeah. virtual reality, augmented reality app yes. is. Cool. And, and you actually start addressing, designing the basketball game app before actually building it. So you build it as you're going through, yes. right, you design it and build as you go yep. through. So you start nice. taking all the considerations that you need to have in mind and so on until you start jumping into what I call the fun stuff, which is like all the technical parts. It's Writing the code, building yeah, the thing. code. We have all the basics of C Sharp. Uh, nice. Then we jump straight up into Unity, what the fundamentals are, how to understand the whole Unity editor. 
uh, we go into the application logic. So we start writing the scripts, we start asking for the inputs and so on, and we start building our application. And finally, we end up with a very nice capstone project that's an open-ended assignment for you to build this into one of the different realities. Of course, right now you can see you already saw the Final, final product of one of the final products of an augmented reality one that's hosted on a phone. Nice. Uh, but if you want to build it on virtual reality, for example, like one of these headsets, you can do it. You can do that as well. Uh, now awesome. you want to do it in a mixed reality one, you can do it. You want to do it on the web because there's also web XR, which is an extended reality through the web. You can build it on a browser and actually interact with it with a device or a phone. So nice. there's nice. multiple avenues and this all they're all covered in this in this curriculum for you to learn and try to uh, get them done from your own. Cool. So you say it's free and open source. There's no cost for learning this. No. And you say you can run it on your phone. So as long as you've got a phone, you can run it. Yeah. What about the tools? Does, does Unity cost money? Nope. Unity is free for anyone that's not working on it on Enterprise. And any code editor will work for the rest of the code. So, so as long as you've got a laptop and you've got a phone, you can build this for free. Yes. This is phenomenal. This is absolutely cool. I love this. Thank you so much for joining us, The Reactor, to, sh to share this with us. This this is just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for having me. And it's my pleasure, honestly. I hope a lot of people will take advantage of this. It's the next big thing. So I'm very excited for it. Awesome. That's so cool. Thank you. Thank you. As cool as this project is, what's even cooler is you can recreate this at home. Check out the link below for everything you need.